Hi, I'm Stephanie, and today we're gonna learn how to use a compass and a map. I'll be honest, compass skills take a lot of practice to master, but with a few basic concepts under your belt, you'll leave this video with a great foundation for furthering your knowledge. If you wanna learn more about any of the concepts we discussed today, LLB and Outdoor Discovery programs teaches a fantastic map and compass skills course, which you can sign up for right here. It won't hurt my feelings if you do, I promise. Let's get started. So hiking is my happy place. And when I hit the trail, there are three things I never leave the house without. A recent map of the area I'm hiking, a good compass, and of course, a bag of gorp. Because even with all the technology available today, a map and compass is still the tried and true standard for wilderness navigation. Maps don't have batteries that can run out, and a compass never loses its signal. Without a proper understanding of the tools you'll be using, you might end up feeling, well, a bit lost. But with a compass, a map, and a little navigational know-how, you'll almost always find your way. Before we really get moving, it's important that we learn our way around a compass. This is the base plate. It's like your compass's command center, with all sorts of handy tools you can use along with a map. Every compass has at least one straight edge to help you take bearings, which we'll talk about in a bit. You can use the ruler to calculate distances using your map scale. There's also the direction of travel arrow. The name kind of says it all. When holding the compass flat in front of you, this triangle should be pointing the way you want to go. This big circle is a rotating bezel. Some people call it the dial. Notice how it's marked with degrees from zero to 360. Later, these numbers will help you set your bearing. And here's the index line. This little guy marks the bearing you set on the bezel. Technically, this red arrow is the orienting arrow, but we like to call it the shed. When the needle is in the shed, you can be confident you're heading in the right direction. Over here by the orienting arrow, you'll find orienting lines. They run parallel to and rotate with the orienting arrow. They'll help you line up the compass with true north on a map. And finally, this is a needle. It points to magnetic north, not true north. We'll get into the difference between the two when we talk about declination. Okay, now that we know what all those compass bits and pieces do, let's go over some map features that might come in handy down the road. Every map is gonna be a little different, but all good maps will have a legend. This topographic map from Map Adventures is particularly legendary, if I do say so myself. The legend will tell you what all the colors and symbols on the map mean. Right here is the scale. It will help you calculate distance between two points. Don't forget your compass has a ruler just for that purpose. You'll also find latitude and longitude lines. You'll want to line these up with your orienting lines on your compass. And these are topography lines. The closer they are together, the steeper the elevation will be, so you'll know exactly what kind of hike you're in for. Finally, let's take a look at the declination diagram. You might not know what this is just yet, but there's no time like the present. Let's get into it. When it comes to maps and compasses, there are a few basic truths you need to remember. One, true north is almost always up on your map. Two, magnetic north is where the needle of your compass points. And three, Declination is the angle difference between the two measured in degrees. You'll need to account for declination to make sure your compass is guiding you exactly where you wanna go. Fortunately, modern map makers have made it easy to find the direction and degrees of declination right here in the legend. Let's see what we can learn from this map of Camden Hill State Park, one of Maine's most spectacular hiking spots. It says here that this region has a declination of 18 degrees west. You're gonna to wanna to remember that number because we're gonna need it soon. But first, we need to learn about one more thing. You know how people will say they need to get their bearings? It's a pretty common way to say, I'm feeling a bit lost. Let me take a second to get myself oriented. That's exactly what we're doing with our compass and map. A bearing is simply the direction in degrees in which a destination lies. As long as you know where you are on the map, you can use your compass to find your way to any other landmark which leads us to taking a bearing from a map. A direction like go east works fine on a highway, 
but it's likely to get you lost in the wilderness. Out here, we want to follow a bearing of X degrees to give us the most accurate path to our destination. Let's say today I want to hike from Zeke's Lookout here to the summit of Mount McGunnacook here. First, we'll place the compass on the map with a straight edge along our planned line of travel. Rotate the bezel until the end points to north on the map. We'll know we hit the sweet spot when the orienting lines on the compass are parallel with the grid lines of the map. You can also use the edge of the map if you don't see any lines. The number that's now lined up with your index line is 141 degrees. That's your true bearing. Because remember, when we're on the map, we're always using true north as the context for our bearing. So this is where it gets a bit tricky. When it's time to start using your compass in the field, you need to convert that bearing to a unit your compass understands, magnetic. And we do that using, have you guessed it? Declination. Our map told us that the declination of this area is 18 degrees west. So we're going to add 18 to the true bearing we took on the map. A little quick math. 141 plus 18 gives us 159. If we were working with an east declination, we'd want to subtract 18 instead, but we'll save that for a different hike. An easy way to remember whether to add or subtract is west is best, east is least. Okay, so we've calculated our magnetic bearing and we're ready to take this show on the road. Oh, I love your fleece. First, Turn the bezel on your compass until our bearing of 159 degrees lines up with the index. Now hold the compass flat in front of you. Turn your entire body along with the compass until the needle rests inside the orienting arrow, or the shed. This is what we like to call putting Red Fred in the shed. Now that Red Fred is comfortably in his shed, you'll want to leave him alone. Turn your attention to the direction of travel arrow which will now be pointing to your destination. Look up, select a landmark in that direction, and get moving. Don't forget, keep those eyes up. If you're always staring down at your compass, you won't be aware of any obstacles in your path, or bears. Whoa, that was crazy. If Red Fred ever leaves his shed, stop immediately, and turn your body along with the compass until he's back home. Keep following that direction of travel arrow until you've reached your destination. One thing to keep in mind, metal objects can interfere with the magnetic field of your compass needle, leaving you wondering which end is up. So be sure to keep your compass away from items like watches, keys, tables with metal legs, your friend's compass, and even a cell phone. So even if you do have service out here, I'd ignore that call for now. I know that using a map and compass can be a little intimidating at first, but I promise it gets easier with practice. To help you on your journey, you'll find a downloadable guide below outlining all the compass skills we just learned together. Print it out and take it with you on your next trek. And if you wanna learn even more or practice in the field with experts who really know their way around a map and compass, consider attending a map and compass skills course with LLB and Outdoor Discovery programs. You can search for classes and sign up at lobeanoutdoors.com. I hope we find each other on the trail sometime soon. In the meantime, like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on our next how-to video. And visit lobean.com outside for more outdoor tips and inspiration. Now, if you'll excuse me, other Stephanie needs my help.